Um, my name is Katie Schuitz. I am the InterSource lead over at Indeed. And we started our InterSource program about eight months ago. So today I am going to talk to you a little bit about our investigations. And we started and the first thing we said is we want to do InterSource and where do we start? So our journey started with a few first steps and we looked at what InterSource can do and said, yeah, we really want to fix our documentation. We want to make it easier for people to collaborate together and we want better communication. We want to reduce our bottlenecks and we want to make sure that people have governance best practices, that they're able to contribute more easily and that th things are more transparent. There, um, people have trouble finding documentation and people have difficulties with um, any sort of collaboration that is outside of their team and on another silo. So to start, we knew that people had these pain points and to begin, we needed to figure out um, what to address first. So our, our first challenge was to figure out who to talk to. We knew we would have a, um, a customer interview. We knew we would have a um, investigation we wanted to do, but we didn't know who to talk to. And the first thing that I was told was, find the squeaky wheels. They will be the influence that will be able to be your outspoken advocates. These are the people that are most aware of a need for change. Um, they know what changes to make that will have the most impact on teams. These people know um, what needs to change, what they want to change, and they have um, influence over team process change. And you want people who are frustrated. And we set out, we talked to people, we um, looked through teams and looked through the organizational charts to find out job titles and moved forward with who we thought would be our best uh, candidates. And once we found those people, we discovered that the conversation needed to start in a way that encouraged people to open up and encouraged people to get involved. So we wanted to involve, inform, inspire hope, and solve, and show that InterSource can solve a problem. So involving the people meant that we needed to bring people together and um, make them know their input is important, that they will be the direction of the program, and that everything they told us would um, ch help change the direction of where their teams were headed. We gave them an overview of what InterSource was, and we showed them how the changes InterSource could create would be a light at the end of the tunnel for um, long term for some of their um, challenges the teams had. Um, we presented InterSource as a solution for the pain points they had been experiencing. And engaging our stakeholders was, a, it took more time than conducting the customer interviews. Getting those first steps, reaching out to people and of gaining their trust because we were about to ask them to um, to be brutally honest and in order to do that we had to gain trust and have conversations before we even started asking questions um, and as we started putting together the customer interviews you we needed to figure out the right questions and we called it a customer interview because the customers of our program were users who would benefit from InterSource. And we can't stress that enough. Your customers are your users. So a customer interview is not an external facing thing that 
impacted our um, product consumers of our products on the external side of the company. They were all of the internal users, and we wanted to make sure that everyone understood that they were all stakeholders in what was happening. They were all our customers. Yeah. Um, the questions we wanted to ask had to show people um, the challenges we wanted to address. We didn't want to sell the program. We didn't want to create a sales pitch deck and convince people that it was necessary. We wanted people to convince themselves. So we, we built our sales pitch into the questions we created. And it is okay if some of the questions are phrased in different ways that are asking the same thing. We made sure that people were um, given different ways of looking at things. Sometimes we didn't get the answer that we wanted, so we ask it again and try to steer people back toward um, the direction of the conversation we were looking for. But most importantly, the last question that we built is the most important because that was the question that left a lasting impression on people that we were talking to. We asked them, what other people should we be talking to? Who is an important asset to the program that you know? It gave them buy-in. It made them feel important that they knew people that would be able to help. And going over a little bit of the customer interview, we had, um, we started by asking a questions in each of the categories that we had addressed as pain points that Intersource could address. And we put them in, we asked the questions in this order so that people could see how Intersource related to each of these areas we told them that it could have solutions for. Um, we asked them about documentation in general. We asked them about documentation on other teams. And that was really important because other teams' documentation was just as frustrating to them, but that guided them back toward looking at their own documentation and realizing that their own team had the same challenges that other teams had, and they were also struggling internally. And we wanted to show people that documentation was a key point for collaboration and communication, which we tied into next. And we wanted people to open up to us we asked these questions and we, the first iteration of this, um, this interview we had really um, didn't have this structure and we, we weren't getting the depth of information we were looking for. So the changes we made to this customer interview allowed us to get people to open up a little bit more. I, told people when we started talking that I was looking for water cooler talk. I was looking for the blunt, honest details that they didn't need to filter because I was not putting their name on a report. And they, they opened up. I heard lots of feedback about uh, people's struggles, people's struggles with other specific teams and how those um, how those other structures caused problems with um, their own teams. So we moved on to um, asking teams about their bottlenecks and some of the bottlenecks that might have been on other teams that weren't on their teams because they were able to then talk to me about what bottlenecks um, were affecting them and what, what other problems caused them bottlenecks. I'm, I'm sorry, I keep moving my screen. Um, 
asking them about project governance was important for us to find out a little bit more about what uh, teams were um, what teams were looking for um, with their priorities and how they were making decisions those teams were um, they didn't have a lot of structure teams thought they were organized but I do not believe I had a single team out of 40 customer interviews that had the same decision making process and the same team structure. There were top down, there were bottom up, there were um, things that were equal across the board. Um, decision making practices were not, there's no, there was no standardization. So we, um, we pulled that information out of teams by encouraging them to open up to us. And then we went on to ask them about transparency. That was a very, very easy question for people to answer. People wanted to see more transparent documentation and collaboration across um, teams. And they were not happy with the situations. So the answers were honest and they were insightful. And then my, I did not stress a lot of questions about contribution because we knew that of other areas that we changed would help impact contribution. And they gave us a lot of feedback about contribution in the other sections as we went. So learning about contribution we got the most information by asking about processes and those questions i asked the same questions about processes multiple times in different ways and i asked them to tell me what they could have in an ideal world they i didn't i wanted them to tell me what processes would be helpful to them if they had no limitations and the answers that I got surprised me. We found out that there were a lot of processes that people wanted that they didn't think were possible and were fairly simple solutions. Things that we could easily um, put in place and they actually were some of our first steps that we were able to put in place surrounding documentation. But before, as I said, the last question is the most important. Who else should we be talking to? That helped us inform um, ourselves about what other initiatives were already out there. I had people say, talk to so-and-so in this other organization. They are already working on a project that will help you with this and maybe a source of automation for you further down the road. And it grew our network. It helped us to um, expand into areas that we did not think about to begin with. And it helped us from our version one to our version two, reformulate some of these questions. Our findings is that people are passionate and people want everything fixed. People want everything fixed with a magic button. They want it done now. They thought Intersource was great and we had to help them understand the expectations surrounding time and what um, possibilities were um, were possible in the short term. So these, all of the findings that we had provided a really good place for us to start prioritizing and designing the um, pilot project. We created a report around all of the pain points, publish it, and got the information out across the organization. It brought teams forward who said, we want to participate in a pilot. These are things that we've been working on. It helped us find teams that uh, just wanted to say thank you and give a, th a thumbs up and let us know to keep in touch with them farther down the road. It gave us teams that had negative feedback who said, this isn't what we're looking for. and 
that feedback was just as valuable as all of the positive feedback because we didn't have it to begin with and it showed us new ways that we could um, address concerns across the organization. So our report and putting together the um, inner source customer interview, um, it took about a month to create the questions using research. It took us about um, um, two months to ask all of the questions. We met with 40 people. And it took another month to write the report and get it out across the organization. This was not a fast process. We've been working on starting Intersource at Indeed for eight months. And that was the first four months. Then it was research. It was taking out a magnifying glass and looking at the organization at a very um, fine level and combing our way through all of the different um, solutions that we needed to incorporate. But that is, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me um, at the information here.